In this tutorial of SEO basics for small business, I'm going to show you the three most important things that need to be done on your website in order to be optimized for SEO. The three most important things you need to know when it comes to optimizing each page on your website are the URL, the title tag, and the headings. These three things define to Google what the page is about, so it's critically important that you focus on them. You'll want to have your keyword research on hand for this because this is where we actually utilize it. Refer back to video number two in this series for a recap on keyword research. The first component is the page URL, also referred to as the slug. Most businesses don't put much thought into the actual URL names of their pages. For example, a service page for a landscaper that does outdoor patio design and installation would often simply get named something like forward slash patios. However, you should be putting special thought into each one of your page's URLs. Here's how to optimize your URL. Use frequently repeated words from your keyword research. Use three to five words per URL and don't use the same word more than once in your entire URL. Lastly, avoid filler words like in, the, and, and adjectives like best, premier, etc. Let's say we're optimizing a page for outdoor patios. From my keyword research, I see that patio installation gets several searches and is the most relevant to the service. So whereas before the URL was likely something like forward slash patios, a better URL would be forward slash outdoor patio installation. My URL is between three and five words. I haven't used the same word twice, and I haven't used any filler words like in, the, and, or adjectives. For brick and mortar businesses trying to rank locally, I recommend adding your city at the end of your URL for your service or product pages. This will help you rank locally when people search that specific service in your city. Here's a side note about your business's domain name. I often get asked if a business should choose a domain name that contains the main target keyword that they're trying to rank for. For example, springfieldlandscaping.com. The answer is, it depends. I don't recommend businesses change their domain name if they already have an existing website. In fact, it could actually hurt your SEO if you switch. But if you're creating a brand new website, then there is some slight SEO advantage to having a domain name that matches your main target keyword. However, the problem comes with over-optimization. Remember, your URLs are not to include the same words more than once, and it can sometimes be hard not to include the same keyword in your URL if it's in your domain name. For example, springfieldlandscaping.com forward slash landscaping services. So in general, don't worry about this tactic. Its benefits are fairly minimal in the grand scheme of your overall SEO. If you're curious how Google chooses what to show in the search results, the answer is you get to tell Google what to show, and this is what's known as the title tag. The title tag is what shows up here in a search result. This title tag in particular signals to Google what your page is about. Your goal is to write a unique title tag for each page on your website. Here are some rules for you to follow. Keep the title tag around 50 to 55 characters. Put the main keyword toward the front of the title, and I personally like to add the city right at the beginning. Keep the language plain and simple. Avoid filler words and adjectives, except on blog posts, and avoid using the same word twice. In some cases, your keyword might be in your business's name. So in that case, there may not be a way to avoid using the same word twice, but when possible, try instead using a different variation of that keyword. Let's start with your homepage first. Your homepage title tag should include your main target keyword at the beginning and then your business name. And if room permits, review your keyword research for the most important supporting keywords and see if you can squeeze any of them in the middle. In this example, my homepage title tag would be Springfield Landscaping Services Acme Landscapes Company. 
My main target keyword is landscaping spring fill, and I had some extra character space, so I added services after my main target keyword and company at the end. Notice how I flip-flop landscaping and spring fill. This is totally fine to make a few aesthetic adjustments. Just try to keep the words on the main target keyword toward the front of the title tag. However, if you need to rearrange the words a bit, that's totally fine. Keep in mind, if you're trying to rank in a specific city, you should include that city in your title tag, like I did here with Springfield. Your goal on your website's other pages is to optimize for a different keyword variation than your main target keyword, which you optimize the homepage for. Think about it this way. Each page on your website should have its own keyword that you would want it to rank for. For your service pages, that service itself will most likely be the keyword that you want that page to rank for. Locate the focus keyword you selected for each service page in your keyword research and revisit video number two in this series if you need to. The formula for pages is similar to the home page, except that you're optimizing for a different keyword and you can drop the business name if room doesn't permit. Unlike the homepage, it's more important here that you get the keywords in versus the business name. The formula for your pages is keyword, including city, plus one to two supporting keywords, plus business name if room permits. So in my example, the title tag would be patio design and installation Springfield hyphen Acme Landscapes. For blog posts, the formula will be variation of the blog title plus business name if room permits. Because blog titles are generally longer, they'll likely take up more characters of the title tag, so only include your business name if room permits. For example, backyard patio ideas for Springfield homes, hyphen Acme Landscapes. The trick here is not to simply copy the exact blog post title but instead try to use a slightly unique variation of it. So now that you've got all your title tags created, you're probably wondering how to add these to your website. Well, most website platforms have a spot for adding these directly to each page, usually under something like SEO title or settings. For WordPress, I simply recommend using the Yoast plugin, which will allow you to add the title tag directly to each page. This is also the point I'm gonna make notable mention of one other element that goes hand in hand with your title tags, but doesn't have an impact on your rankings. And that's what's known as the meta description. This is the description that appears in the Google search results beneath your title tag. I recommend writing a description for each page, otherwise Google will just randomly select something from your content to show there. You wanna keep each description about 155 characters and do this on every page and blog post on your site. The third on-site optimization component is your headings. In general, your pages or blog posts are gonna have some sort of title and then corresponding headings, which break up the text and differentiate different paragraphs on the page. These headings end up being incredibly valuable to Google, even more so than the body text itself, because this is how Google identifies the summary of the content on your page. There's a specific formula you'll want to follow for optimizing these, starting with your title. Your title is just the first headline that appears at the top of your page. The main thing you must do here is include the focus keyword for that page in the title. You can either have the title just be the keyword itself, like patio installation Springfield, or it can be part of a phrase like patio design and installation in Springfield. All you need to remember is that the focus keyword needs to be included here. Next are the other headings. Just like a book has section headings and subheadings, so too should your pages. From an SEO perspective, your subheadings aren't as important as the title we just covered. So I encourage you to write these with the reader in mind. Don't go simply stuffing a bunch of keywords in here. However, when possible, and when it makes sense to the reader, it does help to include variations of your focus keyword in these subheadings. The final step for optimizing your headings is perhaps the most technical part of this entire series. After you've added your page title and subheading, you will need to add what's called a heading tag to each of them. 
A heading tag is HTML code that provides formatting and more importantly, identifies the importance of each heading. But don't worry, if you're using a platform like WordPress, Wix, or Squarespace, this is incredibly easy, so you don't have to do any coding. Most website platforms will let you make the change easily directly in the text editor, like so. The heading tags look like this, h1, h2, h3, and so on. In the code of your website, they're in between the less than and greater than symbols. By adding these tags, you're creating a hierarchy within your content, with h1 signifying the most important heading, h2 being the second most important headings, h3 beneath that, etc. Here are the rules you need to follow. Rule number one, there can be one and only one H1 heading tag on each page, and it should be placed on your title at the top of the page. Rule number two, the next headings need to follow a sequential hierarchy based on their importance. H1 followed by H2 followed by H3, then back up to an H2. You can see how this follows the normal flow of content anyway. Rule number three, it's okay to have two headings back to back, like an H2 followed by another H2. But what you don't want is, for example, an H2 followed by an H4. This will break the hierarchy. If you're unsure if you followed the hierarchy correctly, I like to use the Chrome browser extension called SEO Meta in one click. It allows you to check the headings on any website. And if the technical aspect of this is too challenging, I recommend consulting a website developer. If you explain this technique, they'll know exactly what to do. And to help make the on-site optimization process even easier for you, I've put together a template to help you outline your URLs, title tags, and headings. That resource can be found at mysiteranked.com forward slash basics.